Hey there, this is part two. I'm Camaro, and I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Pokemon game using RPG Maker XP. In this episode, what we're going to be talking about is how to make a basic map. We're going to be making buildings, we're going to be connecting buildings to the town, we're going to be doing all that in this episode. So, without further ado, let's get started. So this is our test town from before, from the last episode. Ta-da! There it is. So, this map sucks. This is, just, this is just bad right now. When you start the game, this is where it takes you. And this doesn't look very good. So, let's edit it a little bit. So first thing we want to do is go down into this map list here and find our test town. Right-click it and go to Map Properties. We're gonna First off, we're going to make the map a little bit bigger. Let's make it 30 wide by about 20 high. You don't want to make it too big now. If you make it like over 100 by 100, the game will start to lag like crazy. So keep it on the smaller side. And then we're going to go to our first layer. Oh, and here's a very important note. Right-clicking is a godsend when it comes to editing maps. I love right-click. So you can right-click. Also, let's press F3. Oh, let's see. There's a thing that you can do. Let me figure this out real quick. I'll be right back when I figure it out. Okay, I'm back. So the one thing that's really interesting that you can do is you can press F4 and make it to, like, isolate layers and F3. So, like, right now it's only ground. Right now this is layer 2 and layer 3 is empty. So layer 1, only ground. Fill it in so there's more ground. Cool. And we got our house. So this will be our house. All right, this will be the house that the player starts in. And we'll put it, like, here. Oh, I have the paint tool selected. What I want is the pencil tool. And another thing that's really interesting is the box tool. You can click and then drag to make a square. And the circle tool is okay. You can click and drag to make a circle, but that's not as useful. You're going to find yourself using box, pencil, and paint, primarily. Alright, cool. So, like, look, if I want to copy this tree, I right-click and hold right-click, then release right-click, and then I can start left-clicking. You're going to want to use right-click a lot. So, when I copy this house, I right-clicked, and then I left click. Eh, it's easy. Okay. And then you can also right click empty space to delete things. So left click to delete it. Okay, cool. So this will be where our player's house is. Simple enough. Let's start adding some trees around the house. To be like a, a border for the map, if you will. One thing that you're going to want is to make the border wide enough so that way you don't see a bunch of black space on the edge of the map. You'll probably notice that like when, you, when you're playtesting your maps, when you make them a little bit on the smaller side, they, um, they will have space at the end that you can see. Like, uh, let's, let's playtest now. Did I save from before? No, I didn't save from before, so if I playtest, I'm going to have to go through the intro spiel again. I'm going to not playtest now instead. What I'm going to do is edit the map a little bit more. Let's add a dirt path underneath. So you can right click, right click on the tile set to select individuals, or right click and hold to select large groups. So you can right click and then left click. And remember, since this is on the first layer, it'll be underneath the house. And then you can press F4 to see how it'll look in game. And then F4 again. So F4 basically is your toggle. That's super useful. Cool. So make sure that I'm copying from the right layer. Paste some trees, paste some trees. This is all basic crap right now. All super basic. Also, the trees aren't... There it is. The trees... I like it when the trees are lined up. Right now, they're not lined up here. So let's line them up. Like so. Cool. This will be a little bit of... Not advanced editing, but you know what I mean. Alright. So this is our crappy square town. Right now, it looks really bad because it's a perfect symmetrical square. If you want to make maps that look better, you're going to want to make it a little bit off. It's like, well, that doesn't look good. You want to make it like, you know what I mean? Like, bleed into the edges a little bit, you know, like, have a little bit of curvature to it. Stuff like that looks better. Alright. So, this is our house. This is our dumb house. And let's have a neighbor. Let's make another house. Let's make another house for our neighbor. Our neighbor will have a nice blue house. And, I'll put it on the third layer, so that way it's kind of resting on the trees. See, if I put that on the second layer, it would totally cut the trees off, and, you know, you don't want that. That looks ugly. So put that on the third layer. Looking good. In fact, let's transfer our house to the third layer. Ba-boom. 
and then let's delete it from the second layer. And let's move the dirt up on the first layer a little bit. Cool, now you got these two houses resting on the trees. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Actually, no, it doesn't look that good. It looks pretty bad if you ask me. But hey, it's a work in progress, right? So let's modify the dirt a little bit. Mow. A little bit. Actually, no. This dirt's okay for now. Well, I'll modify it a little bit to make it not so bad. Let's make it like a T. And then you want to take one of these corner pieces. Well, not one of those corner pieces. One of, uh... Did I pick the wrong one? Oh, I picked the right one. I just pasted too much. Okay. Let's kind of have it do a little bit of this, and then another one of these corners, one of these sides, one of these center pieces, and then let's kind of have it connect down here and then go down. So what we need is more corners, so that's a corner, that's a corner, and this will be a center. Cool! Alright, so they connect and they go down. So, let's go and edit the intro again. So what you want to do, so there's the three layers, right? Layer one, layer two, layer three, and then there's the event layer. It's its own layer. Then you right-click on this event, because this is where they placed it. You scroll down, and let's make it so that way our starting location is uh, in front of our house. Okay, cool. Facing down. Okay, cool. Apply. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Test town. And now let's make our house. Okay. So let's do a new map, and we'll call it, uh, Our House. Hey, isn't that nice? And instead of the outside tile set, we're gonna do the inside tile set. And unlike outside maps, it's okay if inside maps have a little bit like a black border, so that's totally cool. Now let's put some stuff on the ground. Let's find a nice floor texture. I like this wood floor here. Okay, put a little bit here. One thing that actually really helps me when it comes to visualizing these maps too, so right now it's all white on the uh, outside, and that's okay. That's not bad, but it's not good either. There's um, there's a way to edit the tile set. So you can just click on this little blue thing here. It's the database. Database. Database tile sets. And set an auto tile for just a black floor. So now this thing will just auto just be a black floor for always. And then I like filling that in around so it like it's easier to see. And then you want to add a wall. So let's just add a wall like so. Cool. So this is our house right now, and then let's go to the second floor and add a carpet. Cool. So this carpet will be where you walk in. Let's add a little bed. Like, let's let's spruce this up a little bit. We're not going to make the house too fancy right now, because this is all just a tutorial. But, you know, we'll add a bed. Let's go a little higher. We'll add a bed. We'll add a trash can. We'll add a... wardrobe and dresser and stuff. Alright. That's super basic. Let's add a... Let's add a <laughs> I mean, I guess while while we're sprucing things up, let's add a picture on the wall. Boom! Let's add a window! Oh! Well, that's on the third layer now. See, this is where layering comes in. Let's put this picture on the second layer and put that dresser from before on the third layer. There we go. Now it looks like that. I press F4, and this is what I see. I press F4, and I go back to this. Cool. So here's one of the very important things. When you want to make buildings, when you want to make homes, when you want to make any two things connect, you're going to want doors. So let's go back to the, the tutorial map, the palette town, and uh, let's take one of their doors, and then Control-C, copy it, go back to our town, and paste it. Ta-da, there we go. I've pasted their door onto our door. Then, one thing that's super important is you then need to right-click and edit this door. Because right now, this door will take you to Pallet Town. We don't want that. We want, instead, this door to take you to our town. So, it'll take you to our house and put you right here on the mat. Perfect. There's a quick side note that I need to address before I move on. When it comes to making doors, sometimes they line up perfectly, as in, like, the door animation is the same as the door that's on the building. Like this red door here. That works perfectly. But, if you get doors like this blue door, this brown door, you know, sliding glass doors for Pokemon Centers, it's a quick, quick fix, and I'll show you how to do it right now. I copy this door and paste it here. I put it in front of our Pokemon Center, and I go to edit it. What you can do is you can left-click, double-click on the graphic, and go through the doors list here, 
and select a different type of door. So the one for the Pokemon Center looks like this. Cool! Paste the door again. This is a blue door, so what we need to do is go to doors and find the blue door that corresponds. Cool. And that's very important that you select that. It's also very important that you do it for the door. So there's page one and page two. Page one is when you walk into the door. Page two is when you walk out of the door. So you need to make sure that page one and page two are the same image. So they correspond. So when you enter and exit a home, the door will match. And that's very important. Cool. And let's go back to Pallet Town again and steal from them a little bit more. See, they put their town exits one underneath the, uh, the mat. So we'll copy this town exit, or this room, and place it one underneath our mat. And instead of taking you to Pallet Town, it'll take you to our town, here. Okay, cool, copy. That should be good. All right, I'm gonna play through the tutorial. I'm gonna play through Oak, and I'll see you after I'm done with this annoying intro. All right, here we are. So I've just finished the intro talking to Oak. I'm gonna save. Oh no, it's a different file. Oh shit, no. Oh. Uh, wait, what? I didn't know. Dude, I totally am okay with overriding that. Let's, let's do that. Okay, cool. So, what should happen is I should interact. So here's one thing I was talking about earlier also. If you move to the right. Oh no. You can see the black edges there. So what you want to do is ultimately, you want to make it so that way there's like a, like a barrier or a, a, you know, a safety cushion of trees on the edges of your maps. Okay, so let's go into our house. What should happen is on player touch, this will play an animation for the door and then transfer the player to the town or to the house. So let's test it. Working like a charm. Okay, so then what should happen is I should be able to walk down from here and then on player touch, it will transfer me to... It works! And it plays all the sound effects, and it looks good. That's how you make a door. That's how you That's how you make homes. That's how you make it all connect. It's a beauty. It's a beaut. Look at that. It all works perfectly. But, it feels a little empty, doesn't it? Because there's no music. So, let's do map properties again. I got I got sidetracked when I was talking about this before, but there are some things that are very important when it comes to making a map. There's the map name, the tile set, the size of the map, the music. This is the background music, and then background sound. So music is the music that plays when you walk around, and sound is sound effects, like rain, you know, shit like that. So background music, let's play some background music. I have to import some background music. Right now there's like no good background music. So let's just make it... Let's just make it, uh, whatever, Safari? Do I want Safari? That sucks. <laughs> Let's make it a uh, Field 01. That sucks too. Alright, let's do Field 01. And let's make it so that way the house is Pokemart. Okay, cool. So when I play, And I walk around. There we go. The town has Field 01 playing now. The house will then switch the music to Pokemart. Hey, there you go. So when you make maps, when you make homes, you're going to want music. And you're going to want to make sure they connect. So we covered that in today's episode. We covered making a house. Making a simple map. And making doors that connect. Which is super important. And, you know, modern the music a little bit. In the next episode, I'll talk about importing the new music that doesn't suck, as well as some more map-making basics. And I hope to see you there. Let me know if you have any questions. Tweet at me. If you got any questions, leave a comment. If you got any questions, there will be more advanced stuff covered in the future episodes. And uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope I'll see you next time. See you guys. Peace out.